Pacific Drums and Percussion presents Get It Started with Daru Jones and Daru's special guests, Banky McCurdy and Dennis Chambers. And now, live from Electric Garden Studios in Brooklyn, let's get it started. Daru Jones here. We're live at Electric Garden Studios in the B Room. I'm excited. This is my first show in Brooklyn, New York. The other shows that I've done, they, they were in Nashville, Tennessee, so we had the honor of being here in Brooklyn. So yeah, I'm very honored to be at this cool place. I've actually recorded in the room behind me. Um, shout out to Ben Kane, Abby, also my co-host Jules Thomas from DW. Um, we got a really cool topic today. Um, before we get started, I want to talk about what I'm using today. What you can see in the frame is, is the Daru Jones New Yorker, short for DJ and Y. Those are my signature drums with PDP, and they're available right now. Um, the drum heads I'm using, Remo, and they're actually the Ruzik Records custom drum head that I had them design for me, which is my logo. It's my face with the vinyl around it. Um, the hi-hats, symbols, I'm using the Pisces symbols. Um, it's a Dark Energy 22, and the hi-hats are from my signature series with them. It's called the PSTX DJs 45s, all 12-inch. The vinyl vibe, you know what I'm saying, with your boy on it. Shout out to Pisces Symbols. Um, the sticks I'm using today are a head drumsticks, and this is my signature model. I'm similar to the, to the color scheme of the DJ and Y. That's why you see, see it on here, DJ and Y. Um, and those are Leo colors. You see the claw. It's called the Leo stick available now and these are LP goodies little little clamp on tambo joints you know what I'm saying um, and that groove that I was playing you know was a tribute to one of our guests today the legendary Dennis Chambers you know what I'm saying he's I mean you got to do your Googles household name actually I'm sorry because both of my both of my guests today are household names they're very established very versatile and um, my other guest today is going to be my brother Spanky, um, George Spanky McCurdy, you know, Philly, Philly in the building. Um, and I'm very excited. Today's topic, or well, before I talk about the topic, I want to let y'all know that um, if you ask questions, you have an opportunity to win some swag. You can see on the TV the swag, cool, cool bits, t shirts. Um, it's funny because um, one of our guests, Spanky and myself, we're both swaggy guys. Dennis Chambers is as well. But you know we're all about the fashion. You know what I'm saying what we do, and I'm, I'm excited about our guests because I'm going to ask. I got some questions to ask them. But yeah, if you ask questions in this feed, you have opportunity to to win some of the some of the swag. And so yeah, I just want to talk about a little bit of 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 when I was trying to get on coming up, trying to um, the topic we're talking about today is how do I apply? How do I apply for endorsements? This is a very good topic because at some point in your career, drummers, we all want to, you know, we all want to get free free stuff. But of course, you got to pay your dues. You know what I'm saying? And um, it took me a while. You know, I remember going to. They had these conventions called um, the NAM convention. They have a winter NAM that happens in Anaheim, and they have a a summer NAM that happens in Nashville. And basically, it's like a car show, but for musicians. They have the booths, and they showcase all the different gear that's coming out for the year. So, if you want to play Yamaha drums, when you go to the NAM convention, you get a chance to see the new exclusives before they go before they hit the store. You know what I'm saying? So I remember going, you know, I'm a DW artist, so, you know, I always consider DW the Rolls Royce of drums. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm thankful and I'm honored. And I'm excited to be a part of that team. And I'll never forget, you know, when I started furthering through my career, you know, um, some sometimes I would tour. And I'm just trying to look for ways to save money. And I, I heard about this, you know, you being endorsed 
you know what I'm saying? You being able to get free gear. We all like free. <laughs> Who don't like the word free? <laughs> but it's not just that, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's a trade-off, you know what I'm saying? Basically, from what I've learned, the companies, they want to see that you are, you know, being exposed. And, and depend, depend on the artist that you're doing. So I started playing gospel. I started, I started playing in church. That's my roots. And um, basically idolizing the people that I looked up to, like Dana Davis and Michael Williams from Detroit, Michigan. Um, they were big in the, in the gospel community. And then eventually I graduated to, well, I found out about the jazz community. And I started finding out about one of our guests, Dennis Chambers, along with Tony Williams. The list goes on. And then I noticed that all those drummers, they have Pacific brands. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, why do why why is it that every time I see this drummer, they play these same brands? You know what I'm saying? I don't have to mention them, but they they and I was and I then I then I eventually when I started getting the modern drummer magazines, they would list the items that each drummers were using. And then I saw that, okay, I, I eventually found out that's what it meant. They were endorsing those particular brands. And I was like, man, how do I get on that level? <laughs> but all I all I all I want to say to drummers, if I can do it, you can do it. A lot of us, we come from nothing. We come from the hood, or some of us, we may have came up wealthy. But I'm just saying, I know where I come, what I where I come, you know, my upbringings, and I had no idea I would make it to what I made it to today. And if I can do it, you can do it. Just stay persistent, stay persistent. Find a lane you want to be in, stick with it, and eventually it will catch on. So just to fast forward to talk about the topic, um, how do I apply for endorsements? I just remember when I would go. Um, in the 90s when I got exposed to the, the conventions like the NAM, they had another convention called PASIC, which is like a, a, a convention they have once a year. And it was just all, it was all for drummers and percussionists. And it's, anytime you can go to those conventions, I say go because you learn so much information from the legends, you know, how, about the business, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and what we're gonna talk about today. And you guys get opportunity to get this, you know, at no charge. So let's give a shout out to DWPDP, you know, for bringing this, let me do the show. And yeah, I'm looking forward to our guests and your questions. But just to fast forward, when I would go to PASIC, I remember trying to get on. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's the term that we used in the game. Like, yo, I'm trying to get on. Like, I want to, you know, I want to get endorsements. So I remember there wasn't any YouTube out there at the time. Literally, what I would do is I would make reels. And um, I always documented myself, whether I, I, I recorded myself with a tape with a cassette or I video recorded myself from a, from a, from a, um, from a camera. And um, I was doing that back in the days, even before YouTube came out. So when YouTube came out, I had the content, you know, so that's one thing is I can help you with endorsements. You want to have that reel that you can show people your work. So um, basically that's what I would do. I would make a, you know, get somebody to make me a bio, you know, get it all, you know, typed out. And then um, my lane, I, I wanted to follow like Steve, like, 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 Dennis Chambers and Steve Gadd, they're versatile drummers, as well as as well as um Spanky. You can place them in any situation that they would get the job done and they have a, a vibe. So I wanted to be a John Rabendi drummer. So I feel like that would work in, 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 you know, to my favor. And um basically I started moving around. I would play in gospel circles. And then eventually when I started playing the fusion jazz, I would find out who those circles were. And then I would record everything. I would I would document it. And so when it got time to go to NAM, I would have my backpack on and I would have these demos with a little um, a sleeve with like my bio that will, will speak about, you know, what I what I had done in my career. And at that particular time, I want to fast forward because it, it took a while for me to even get my first endorsement. Because there's so many drums out there and you got the notables, the notables that's out there and they, they, they've been in the game and, and people hired them. But I want to say when I started becoming like the hip hop dude, and, and I want to give a shout out to Quest Love because he was one of the first people that I saw play hip hop in a band setting. And um, in the middle, the mid 2000s, I became the hip hop guy to go to um, outside, of, outside of Quest Love from the Roots. Um, basically a lot of artists that I was working with, they wanted to tour certain festivals in Europe. And to do that, you need to have a live band. Pardon me, pardon me. You need to have a live band. Um, so one of the first, Big bands or legendary hip hop groups that I played with was Slum Village from Detroit, Michigan. Um, the producer, his name is Jay Dilla. He's passed away. And so when I started playing with Slum, that was one of the bigger um, hip hop guys that I worked with. And I made a good reputation with them. And what people liked, what they called me, they was like, yo, Daru will play the records just like the album. And that's how I made a good reputation for myself. So that was that's how I built my brand. So when I started touring with Slum Village, eventually I started working with Talib Kweli. He's a Brooklyn MC, one of the biggest 
hip hop guys from the like the 90s. He's still relevant. He's still doing his thing. And um, I started working with all the hip hop guys because I make the reputation for myself. And what I would do is when I would go to those shows, I had this little cameo, this um, Casio camera. I would just take out and I would just put it in the back room and I would record everything. And what I would do, I would make a reel. I would get like, um, I learned how to use Final Edit and I would basically edit the videos down to like 30 seconds, showing me playing with this artist, other artists, and I made a reel. So then when I would go to go to basic, I was like, all right, now is my time. And I never forget, I remember meeting a good friend of mine. His name is Marco Saconia. Shout out to Marco. He's one of the last good reps. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a real rep. And I hope I don't get too long winded because I know I want to bring up our guests. But yo, know, Marco, he's a good friend of mine. I, I I never forget when I used to go to Basic on the NAM conventions. It would be a line of people trying to get to Marco because he was like the gatekeeper. He had the relationships and he was getting people endorsements with whoever brand. I think he was with Vic Fur for whoever he was with. Marco was like the guy at the time. So I never forget. I basically what I wanted to do, and I recommend people when you go to these conventions, try to find out who is the CEO or the boss. That's who you want to meet. Shake hands, let them see your face. I think that's what helped me out because a lot of times these guys are getting hit left and right by a million people about can I, how can I get free drums. The last thing they want to hear from you is how can I get free gear. But what helped me out was being consistent and my face being seen. So every time I went to those conventions, I made sure I at least shook their hand and I was like, hey, I'm going to keep you posted with my activities, whether I had a reel or like a bio or, some or a cassette or a CDs to give them. But the more that they saw me, one day they was like, hey, I got this, this new gear that I'm trying to get people to test out. That's how it starts, just building that relationships. So I would say relationships is the most important thing if you're trying to get an endorsement. Build a relationship. It's not always like, yo, can I get free gear? Just learn, just be cool. So I was just going to the conventions, being cool, letting them see my face shaking their hand, let them know what I was up to. And then eventually an endorsement came into play when I started doing these tours and I needed gear that was going to last me for the entire tour because then you know, like being on a, on a, you know, playing a gig and your sticks break. And then if you're not making that much money, you got to go in your pocket, you know what I'm saying, and buy. And drums are not cheap. Sticks, cymbals, you go through those, you know what I'm saying? Depending on the gig that you're playing, you want to make sure that everything is up to, to par so you so you can sound your best. So just a tip, when you go to the conventions in NAM and Pisic, find out who's the, the, the guy in charge, build a relationship with them, and just be cool. Don't go asking, yo, I, I like those sticks, can I, can I get those? You're going to get, be, get, you know, you're going gonna to take a number, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, just a, just just a couple tips. Right now, I want to bring up my first guest, Philly's own, my brother, George Spanky McCurdy. You, what it do, bro? What up, what up brother? Thanks you for having me. No, I'm glad I'm glad you took our time. I know you're a busy guy, and it, it's it's funny all that we're in the pandemic. I feel like I've been so busy, more busy in this time. Is it the same for you? Same for me. It's been like, you know, getting a lot of different things done that I didn't have the time to get done before. You know, now we have that time to focus on ourselves and just, you know, really, really, you know, uh, just emerge like to the point where once it's open, it's going to be like, I am i don't even have time to, you know, do this and that gig. But that's cool, too, because it'll make us more selective, you know, in our yes. gig choices. Exactly. So yeah, I just want to talk about Spanky. Like I've been hearing, I've been hearing about this name for a grip. Like Spanky had a, a household name brand for a minute. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad we was able to finally like build our brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Spanky, his resume goes long. And what I've liked about Spanky, oh, somebody sent a question already. Salute, Dar oh, that's my man, Crave Digger from um from Ohio. Can you put that up up again, Jules? Salute, Daru Jones, Dr. Spanky. Got a shout out, bro. Crave, yes, up? sir. Yes, sir. So, um, so yeah, just to fast forward, just hearing about Spanky's name, obviously he made a he made a name for himself. You know what I'm saying? And I know that wasn't easy because you had to jump hurdles and you got to pay dues that a lot of people don't want to do nowadays. They just they see you with the stuff and they like I can do that too. But um, just hearing about Spanky's um, from the Lady Gaga to Q-Tip, I like his resume. So I just want to 
can you give us a little backstory on how you started? Just a brief story on how you got started. Um, <clears throat> definitely from everything from church. Uh, I remember, um, you know, we had um, I had a a bass player come in, and he was like, it was like a trial run. You know, let's let's have this bass player for two weeks and see if he wants to join the church. And he ended up joining. Then come to find out, with the bass player, he has this crazy major major big choir with all of these heavy hitters on drums you got john if not john brian you know jeff brashaw is in it i mean everybody jay's poison june burke like all of philly is in this choir so it's like i was about 13 12 or 13 and it's like come to the rehearsals you know i started coming to the rehearsals met everybody and then it's like andre harris was the drummer at the time so i met dre and you know i already knew vi and it was just crazy just seeing everybody. And then, you know, from there, just being in place to step up, you know, when they got busier and when they, you know, blew up as producers, I was able to spin as that drummer. And then from there, I went on a tie. And then from, you know, just it got got pretty crazy after that. But just like the Philadelphia connection, just being in Philly and like um, being in that circuit, you know, being called for a lot of different sessions just left and right, you know, like Timbaland coming down and, um, so many different sessions left and right. Like, Spanky, can you come down? Can you do this? And then the Roots, you know, uh, Rich Nichols, shout out to Rich. Um, mm, he was always yes. calling me and all of my friends to do stuff. Me, Daryl, you know, um, Boots, Jay, like we all worked for Rich Nichols, everybody. So just the, the, the whole city, man, it was really, you know, I'm blessed, you know, just like you are, like your journey, you know, just to be from where you are, it's the same thing here. That's a, that's a blessing. As y'all as y'all heard hear the names, you know what I'm saying. So Frankie came up good in a good time, and I just want to oh, remember, yeah. like, like when I came up, I didn't really care about the gear. I just wanted to play. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I remember going to church, and I just wanted to get on. So when did you decide that you wanted to start look, looking into endorsements? Like when did you when did you make that transition when you felt like you started needed to get you know what I'm saying getting put on? Not until my OGs were on and telling me stuff like, hey, man, you need to, I have uh, I have the A&R from Tama coming through tonight. You know, like, you need to meet him. You need to, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, just like you, I wasn't even <laughs> focused on it. Then Brian um, mm -hmm. with Vader, I believe, you know, just, so I was um, just following my my OG's footsteps. And even so what, with- So, so not, not to cut you off, like what, what Pacific gig that, was it a Pacific gig where you felt like you needed to get endorsements or I didn't want to cut you off, yeah. but I was just trying to get be Pacific. At the time, I was on tour with uh, Aries and um, we were opening for Music Soul Child. Little John was on tour with music. And, um, you know, Aries was doing well. Then I was doing Thai stuff too. So um, mm. we had a chance to open up. But then at the end, you know, John let, let me get on again. And, you know, like the Tampa. Mm. So, yeah. Waiting on Spanky to catch back up with the um, got frozen, but yeah, he was just talking about experience, his experience, like myself, you know, like like I mentioned, like it was specific gigs that I had. Are you there, Spanky? Just 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 speaking about um specific gigs that I felt like I needed to start getting sticks because that money was coming out of my pocket, <laughs> so I didn't want to go home and use all the money that I made to buy new symbols and sticks, so um. So yes, yeah, Spanky, are, are you there? Got him frozen. You there, bro? Um, so yeah, like I said, it was very cool to hear those names from the Philly scene. Like I'm a fan of the Roots and James Poyser, um, Questlove, Rich Nichols, and are you on Wi-Fi? Got you. on Wi-Fi. Yeah. Can you use your hotspot? I'm on. Okay, there we yeah, go. You on? You on? You back? <laughs> yeah. So we so we right. so we were talking Mom, about get um, off the of Wi-Fi. Sorry. Got a got a got a lot of moms. Got a lot of mom dukes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but you want to continue? We were talking about when you figured out when you started wanted to get that Pacific gig that you got that you feel like you wanted to get endorsement with. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was, um, you know, I was already using Vader stuff. I was already playing Tama drums. I was already playing Sabian cymbals. So 
when that opportunity came, it was just like, just like you said, it was a major blessing. I'm like, wow. So I get to order stuff and do this and that. So I was blessed to be endorsed and basically walked in, you know, like, you know, the great walk in, you know, you hit up yes. your, your OG the OG and the, the homie. I, yeah, I was blessed to be walked in kind of right before like everything happened. So like when I got on these gigs, you know, like it made things easier as far as getting gear and stuff like that. You know. Mm. So, would you have any advice to any any people that may not be able to have OGs walk, you know, walk 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 you walk you through? Would you have any advice to give them? Yeah. Um, first of all, it's it's good to just kind of like know what you like now. Uh, you know, if you play Promart, go after Promart. You know, don't just go after um, who's trying to sign you. You know, um, at least try to go after who you want to go after. You know, then after that, then you can make a business move to. Um, go to another uh another company but you know just make sure you take the product seriously you know like get a bundle of sticks try them out yourself you know this you know just take it seriously don't just you know be so excited to you know do this and that. And it's hard for me to say that because you know like i was young and you know i did certain things but just try to weigh it out because right now today you know like we have uh, all the power so it's like you know we're we're moving all the products now, you know, through our, our social media. Like we're not doing shows and stuff. So how are you know, how are they seeing drums? How are they seeing symbols through our social medias and through our own virtual twitches and all that stuff? So right now we have the power. So make your choice because companies are much more receptive now, you know, and, and for signing drummers and stuff now. So if you have your social media together and all of that stuff, you already like steps ahead of the game. Just like Daru said earlier, he already had his footage and everything. So by the time you know stuff started, oh, you know, I need a bundle. Oh, here, here you go. I got, I got footage. Cool. I got, you know, and it's like, oh, you know. So that's a good facts, facts. So, Jules, we got a couple questions that we want to take. Did he jump on you? Can you see the question, Spanky? Okay. Yeah. Can, can you speak to getting the exposure in modern day times? IG, Facebook, so on and so forth. Are the companies looking and or listening for anything in specific? Um, no, not really, because you know I don't think so. It's, it's so many killing videos, right, Daru? I mean, it's so yes. many killing videos. So it's like it's, it's a numbers, it's a numbers, it's a numbers, it's a numbers, it's a numbers game almost. Not the cut you yes. off. Yep, it's a numbers game. So it's like make sure your content is good. You know how. We got you frozen, but yeah, just to tag on to what? Man, frozen again? Yeah, you back, you back, you back. Oh, it's good. It's all good. Okay, um, or um, YouTube, how to get the best uh, video quality, even if it's from your iPhone. So, um, yep, the iPhone. You froze up, Spanky. I'm gonna finish it out on the question. So yeah, basically for what I'm seeing, it's good if you can record it at a great quality. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what catch your eye when you go in the store. You see something that's flossy and it looks sharp. If your eye go right to it. So if everybody's on the on the internet and they putting out footage, raw footage, and it's not of a quality, it doesn't matter how good it is. You're going to gravitate towards the footage that looks great. You want to finish yeah. that, Spanky? I didn't mean to cut you off, but you got. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what I was saying. You know, as long as it looks good and sounds good, nice nice mix, and the consistency of it. Um, because you see a lot of Germans that have like um really you know nice pages with nice nice videos just nothing but drum content just flood 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 so do it yep yep we got another question jules <laughs> pay you a salary and there's the equipment <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> very good question the answer is now me no i don't get paid hey you know what it's so funny because I've had companies approach me, you know, I guess to try to get me to leave. And it's like, they kind of give that hint. And that's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. You froze up again, Spanky. Juice, can you put that question up one more time? Oh, you you, you back, Spanky. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do they pay you? <sighs> You back, you back. Sure, that's the, that's just a good question. No, it but a, it's it like, a good question. <laughs> um, you know, it's like two sides to it. You know, you get all of your endorsements for anything you need, you know, your tour and 
your tour and home and recording studio and everything. So you're, t you're well taken care of. But then there are some drummers that do get paid. So that's the narrative that I find myself along with Daru. Mm -hmm. We're kind of breaking that chain more yes. to break more in that realm of, you know, uh, us being paid, especially like more African-American drummers being on salary and stuff like that. You know, so it's yes. like, that's very important because a lot of, you know, people that's on salary, that's are, you know, chilling while we're doing all the. Yes, he got facts. He froze up um, Spanky. But yeah, that's 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 a good um that's a good observation. But um, we I mean I'm, I'm blessed. I'm thankful because we know it's a different day. We didn't yeah. come up. Well, we 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 got a chance to ex to to get exposed to Chambers and the VHS tapes, but they came mm -hmm. up at a good time. They they didn't you know. But now you got the YouTube and it just it's over oversaturated. So now you got to find out who have and, and a lot of people they're not even trying to be authentic. They just seeing what one person do and they just copying it, which you know, that's yeah. that's that's cool too. I ain't knocking it. But if you want to make a make a make a staple, you know what I'm saying, you want to get some things like what Spanky have, you have to be authentic. You look at Spanky, he he has a brand, he's not just a drummer. He got the full package just with his, his, the way he dressed. All of that it, it, it's it's a part of, of how people see you. Can you can you agree, Spanky? You, bro. Yeah. Thank you. So like what Spanky was saying, nowadays we do have an opportunity, but as drummers, we can't we, we can't get arrogant and get beside ourselves because it's not all about us. We should know our worth at the end of the day, but still be humble. You know what I'm saying? Because all, all you got is your rep. And if you have a, a if your reputation is like this dude is, you, you can be the best dressed and be killing, but if your attitude is not in line, then that's gonna close down endorsements because you're gonna be, Companies they're gonna see you as a liability. Yes. So, Very Spanky, true. did you wanna do you wanna expand, expand a little bit on that question? Or do you wanna move wanna move on? Nah, nah that was it. Cool. You don't want the money. Yeah. So, shout out to my brother Spanky doing this thing. I saw. I see. I, I, I see his brand. He got some things out right now, and I, I definitely want to get one I'm of them serious. shirts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need to get. I, need I to got get. you. Hey, ghero.com. <laughs> go to the website. We got some new products dropping this week. Um, go check us out, y'all. Uh, we're only going to get better and bigger. Um, got some. Uh, what are we doing? Working on a manifest rule. I just worked on some new bucket hats, man. Hey, fire! I got what? you. Got to some buckets. Yep. Yeah. Please. Crazy, crazy buckets. Well, Spanky, yep. I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and giving us your knowledge. Thank you. Do you have anything else that you want to add before before we move on to Dennis? Because we just got a short, we got a certain amount of time. Um, I just want to say I'm super, super hype. You already know. I love Uncle D, bro. I love you, bro. Jules, thank you for having me. I got you, bro. This is beautiful what you're doing. Whatever you need, I got you. Thank you. So hey, for those, if, if you want to find Spanky, website. this is his website. Mm -hmm. yep, go ahead, Spanky. Go ahead. You can talk. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, that's the website, um, SpankyDrums.com with Z. Um, and then you saw GHuber.com. Um, Instagram is Joe Spank. You know, um, hey, Bobby, I hit you back. I do respond to as many demons as I can. So hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ru. Yo, I know, I, I, I know what you, I know what you mean, bro. Thank you so much. All love. I'm here if you need anything. You know, you got support from me. Yes, and I'm wishing you much success yes, in 2021. Hopefully, that will will be too, crossing bro. paths at some point and doing something oh, yeah. on a bigger scale. What God has. Nashville, I'll be there. Yeah. Let me know, bro. Bless. Hey, absolutely. Yep. Amen. Cool. All right. Yeah, amen. So thank you guys. That was my brother, Spanky, George Spanky McCurdy. Um, hopefully you guys learned some things from what he said. And yeah, that's a great example of what you can do when you pay your dues. And like, like he said, he touched on um, not just playing any brand just because you can, they, they sign the people, but be specific. Find the item that you use that you want to endorse. And all I can say is yes or no. You know what I'm saying? That's all, you know, so don't short yourself but if they say no just go back next year because you never know they may be looking to, for the drummer with your style that's what it's all about because every year i heard this is what it is every year the companies they have to sign pacific drummers so if you if you're hot you're making your rounds you're getting it in you may be up next everybody have their time so let's let's stop the hating on each other 
You know what I'm saying? Because if, if we all work hard, we can have those same opportunities. Don't get mad at your brother, your sister. If they have an opportunity and you may not get that yet, you're going to get it. Just keep doing, learning like watching Spanky, you know what I'm saying? And, and learning what, what to do and, and then learn from what not to do. And you'll, you'll be able to be in, in these positions. But yeah, I want to thank my brother Spanky. He had a lot of good knowledge. Shout out to him. And um, I'm very excited about our guest that we're going to close out the show. Um, man, what can I say? <laughs> like, P Funk, you know what I mean? We're talking about from Parliament. And basically, the groove I played earlier, I tried to play one of Dennis Chambers' grooves. And back in the days, I found out, even with James Brown, they always talking about playing on the one. And the one was like that on that rise symbol. That's why I was like, do, 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 that one is so powerful. And I'm gonna let Dennis expound on this. So without any further further ado, the one and only, Dennis Chambers. Hey man, how you doing, Daru? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Uh, considering all what I went through for the last two months, but I'm doing fine. Man, we're so honored to have you, Dennis. I'm 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 like wow I'm looking this what you got there what you sitting behind is that a drum kit? Oh yeah, this is my Midtown Electronic kit uh, that Pro sent me. Wow, I'm I'm still learning it actually. Do you want to give us a little bit of, of, of what it sounds like? Well, it sounds it's, it's a lot more sounds than what I have here now, but okay, let's see. Ooh. And I'm still mixing it. See, I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't play it. I cannot play it like the like the master. You know what I'm saying? So that there, there you go, the master at work. And and I was I was telling people about that one, the power of of that of that one. And thankful for having you on the show, Dennis. Um, do you want to speak about that one? Well, I mean that's that's uh, that's that's always that came from James Brown. James Brown always had that theory that everything or anything that's groove or funk based. It's about mm -hmm. the one. Make sure you know where one is, and that that it, no matter what style of music you're playing, you should always know where one is. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you can, you know, in the fusion settings, you know, like if you start uh, in, uh, playing electric time modulations and stuff like that, you should always know where know where the true one is. So wherever you start your drum fill, if you started on a beat, or on the end of the beat, or of the beat, or 16 okay. beats over. At least you know where to come back in, and mm. uh, and you got to be right where the band is, or else you're going to derail them. Facts, facts, and I and it's, it's that's a that's a good example because I've saw you in various settings, not maybe maybe not live, but just through watching the VHS tapes, and I always felt like you were counting regardless of what you were doing. I felt like you had a clock, a mental clock, and I can always find that one. Yeah, I wasn't really just counting. I mean, it, I just I just knew where it was. Okay. <laughs> so long, you know. And, you know, like, we, you know, playing with P-Funk, and then after P-Funk, playing all the stuff that I've, I've done up until now, I mean, playing with John McLaughlin, mm. who knows more time signatures than most drummers. <laughs> uh, you know, like, one night, he, t he we were playing Purple Haze, I think it was. And he said, Purple Haze at 15. I'm looking at him like, are you crazy? <laughs> I heard Purple Haze in four the whole, all my life, you know. Mm, mm, mm. And, then, uh, and then there's so many different ways you can, you can uh, interpret it, 15, you know, subdivisions and stuff. So, I mean, of course, it's, 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 it's always 555. Five, five. But mm. sometimes, like with John, he'll, like, say 15, and he'll play a group of 15s for, like, Maybe ten measures, and then all of a sudden he will throw sixteen in there. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, so you have to know where it is, and also, most importantly, know know where one is, so you know where you are. Okay. Oh my you god! Did, 
Were, 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 were they? Were they? I know they. I heard that James Brown used to dock his musicians once once they made a mistake. Was that happening with the other people that you worked with at the time too, or no. they they just they looked at your side eye? <laughs> they didn't give you the, the side eye, but, and and you know it's it's because you know if you're human, you're gonna make mistakes. Yes, sir. There's a difference between making a mistake and not knowing the music. Mm. Like I was with Steely Dan uh, once, and um, uh, a song came up. And I played another song. I started the, the thing in another song. But that, that was because we were playing at the, the, the Houston Thunderdome or something like that. I mm, think that's mm, what mm. it was called. The Thunderdome. Mm. And my earbuds dropped out. And then I learned why they called that building the Thunderdome. Because <laughs> you can hear the band playing previously before you got there. Who are you playing? What? And most important <laughs> that you have to wear earplugs with you know in that place. That, okay, I understand. And not only that, <laughs> my, my drum tech had uh, he had put the set list up under a stand, and what I looked down and saw the next song, I mistook it for another song because you know the song that I was supposed to play was covered up. Flames. <laughs> <laughs> so you know the guys, you know they all looked at me and they laughed, they, you know, because they knew, you know, like for me to do that, there was a, there was something happened. It wasn't because I didn't know. Mm. Well, you you've always been one of the most precise drummers that I've known. You know what I'm saying, and still is. And you know, thanks so much for taking our time. I just wanted to, if you can, just give people like a short little history of how you started, and then we're going to the topic, like you know your beginnings. Well, it all started with my mom. My mom was a singer. Uh, she used to sing with Motown uh, before I was born, I think. Mm. And But she didn't stay there that long because she didn't like it. Um, okay. Uh, but she was still on the road when I was a, a baby. I think she came off the road when I was like three years old. Mm. And my sister was two, I believe. Wow. So she came off the road. Um, and that's professionally and locally. But she put a band together. Um, locally, mm. and I used to sit there and watch the. It was the only thing that kept me still. <laughs> oh, wow! Because and that's how I got the name Dennis. Because Dennis is not my real name. Okay. <laughs> and the only thing that kept me still was like watching this drummer play. His name was Booney. I remember his name, mm. and I was like three years old. So, uh, three years old. I remember Booney, and mm. I could see the drum kit right to this day. It was a champagne sparkle. <laughs> Gretsch kit and mm. it was a four piece mm. and uh, he sounded great to me and I saw these shiny things you know gold looking things that he was hitting which mm. is the symbols so I guess <laughs> it was because of he's hitting and, and I'm seeing these flashy things just moving wow and as soon as he leave I would like pick up something as you know like a knife or fork or anything I get my hands on to just a bang and um they brought me a drum kit. Um, they went down to this place called Ted's Music Store on Center Street here in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, they brought a drum kit. It was custom made because they took a full tom. Uh, I think it was a 14-inch. No, no. It was a 16-inch floor tom and turned it into a bass drum. What? And, wow. And modified all the the, uh, the uh, hardware, you know, such as tom arms and stuff like that to a height, certain height. And I had a 14-inch floor tom, as I remember, and a 12-inch, uh, a it was either 12 or 13-inch tom. And, uh, you know, of course, the snare. And um, I would sit there and practice. I would I would sit there and watch him play. And then when, he's get, when he gets finished, I'm, you know, like, stop banging on stuff. And then I started playing to records. Mm. And... And all of a sudden, I mean, after that, man, I just, I just had a serious love to drum and drums, mm. music, you know, I mean, because wow. it was all this music, it was, it was played in my house. And I thought, now when I'm talking about the 60s, I thought to become a great musician, you, a musician, you have to learn all these styles of music. Mm. So, and, wow. and because all that style, all styles of music was in my mother's house. Mm. You know, like one minute you're listening to Rita Franklin, next minute you're listening to, uh, um, Miles Davis. Next minute, you're listening to like big band music. You know, wow. that's how I discovered uh, Buddy Rich mm. and went back to, you know, get the theory or history about, you know, Big Sid Catlett and, and uh, um, you know, um, 
oh man, uh, Louis Belson and, and all those guys, you know, and Chick Webb, who was right from here, right from Baltimore. Mm. And uh, it wasn't until later when I met uh, Louis, Louis used to tell me great stories about Chick because he remembered him and he also played opposite of him many nights. And he mm. said every time that little guy was around, they, he, they had their heads handed to him. <laughs> you know, every, time he, every time Woo. he came around it was bad news you know oh my god <laughs> flames <laughs> and louis said it with a smile so i knew he was like reliving it at the moment <laughs> oh, my god. oh my god Mm-mm-mm. but uh yeah i mean and then you know being able to meet buddy rich at a very young age um uh, after you know going through my practice routines and then i got picked up with a band uh uh, one day this guy was driving home from work and I used to practice on the third floor on Preston Street here in Maryland, mm-hmm. in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was sitting in traffic and he heard this drumming going going on. Mm-hmm. And I guess it, it catched his ears. So he pulled over and followed the drumming and led to my house. Knocked on the door and talked to my mom about who's playing drums. And she told him, oh, it was my, my six-year-old kid was five-year-old kid and he's like five years old <laughs> he wanted to see it so she let him in the house you know imagine that she let a stranger in the house oh my god back then that's how innocent time was not compared mm. to now you know mm. um where you wouldn't let anybody in but um wow she let him in he came up there i'm looking at this this dude with a nice little goatee on his face and and he's talking to me about playing drums and and asked me to play some more. So I played some more. And then he was like, well, you ever you ever played in a band? I'm like, no. Nah. And he <laughs> hired me to play in his band. What? And that's how I was able to play in nightclubs at the age of six. <sighs> you know, and it went from there to, it just kept, you know, gradually, you know, just getting, you know, getting better and playing with bands. And of course, we had some unbelievable drummers here back at that time. Mm-hmm. There was a guy named Bob Lawrence. Uh, Ruben Armstrong, who's a dear friend of mine who died, passed away. Ralph mm. Fisher is another phenomenon. Mm. Um, um, Buster, you know, all these guys, man. And I used to sit there. And of course, I, you know, at the time, I, I didn't, well, even till now, I never took any lessons. My lessons was just watching the greats before me. Mm. And back at that time, we had a we had this, this, this uh, a wagon called, uh, or a company called Operation Champ. And it was a wagon. Well, it was a it was a more of a a theme for uh, you know they uh, a company that will come to an area and have all these games and stuff for kids. And it was government funded, and that's a, another weird thing that the government just bailed on all these these phenomenal things for kids, and then mm-hmm. they wonder why kids out here you know like doing what they're doing now. Yeah, while and out because they took all the they took all the playgrounds away. They they took the um, you know, all the basketball uh, uh, courts, they took the nets down, they took the rims off. Mm. And then, you know, wow. like, well, what idle mind, what, you know, idle mind is going to do what an idle mind is going to do. Facts. And then if you got negativity around, well, they're going to gravitate to that. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, for me, it's like, uh, you know, I didn't buy into all, I didn't buy into all of that because I just wanted to play drums. I just wanted to practice and I was always with a pair of sticks in my hand with summer, winter, <laughs> whatever. And I would, if I wasn't physically practicing, I would mentally practice. So therefore it's like, I failed a lot of classes <laughs> cool because you know, she's giving a math lesson and I'm sitting there like a oh, math. Okay. So math, like five, five, four, you know, <laughs> you know, 16, what's 16, how many beats I can get into 16 beats, you know, all that kind of crap, you know? So it's, and then I was able to see, you know, like all these greats, you know, thanks to the Champ Wagon. And I forgot to mention, oh, I, I, I was getting into the Champ thing. But Champ Wagon, at the end of the week, they would have a, a semi truck. Mm-hmm. And it would like back up across a street, block off a street. And then they would open one front of it up and then they would pull, these, pull the stage out from it. And on that truck, man, I was able to see like all these great jazz greats, and all, I mean, just a whole bunch of great people. Period. Mm. But mainly it was jazz, and um, you know, I saw Art Blakey, I saw Billy Cobham once play with uh, Hart Silver. That was in the '60s. Um, 
And that was the first time I saw him. And he was playing jazz. I had no idea. He, wow. he was the guy that played with my Vishnu. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, when I saw mm-hmm. him with the my Vishnu, I just couldn't believe it was the same guy. You know? But I was able to see Tony Williams uh, uh, back doing the, uh, they had just, uh, the, I think the Miles Smiles record just came out. Mm. The record with Freedom Jazz Dance on it. Wow. They were playing a lot of that music. And of course, you hear them on record is one thing, but then when you see them live, man, it was like. A monster. Monsters. <laughs> and I remember that was the first time I saw somebody play and I couldn't sleep for 48 hours. And I saw Tony. <laughs> I didn't understand none of it. But I knew I was saying something great and something I couldn't do. And it's something that I wanted to do. And that inspired me to, to you know, go in that direction, you know, playing jazz and understanding mm. how to play a, a, a jazz beat on a ride cymbal. Mm. And, 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 um, and I would, you know, take my cymbal. I would learn that I would take my cymbal in a corner and just practice dotted eighth notes on it. Mm. You know, just get a, even be and doing everything slow, of course. Now that's the other problem. Like a lot of uh, drummers have these days, they they like to well, not a lot. The lot of a lot of the beginning drummers they have today, they they like to play everything play fast, 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 and they don't know that you know playing things slow. There's such thing as as, as um, muscle memory, hmm. and if you do things slow and get the feel of it in your muscle. When you speed it up, it should feel the same as slow. Mm. And if you do that, you have more control over the stick when you hit the hit the cymbal and the drum. Mm. Not only that, you learn that when you when you hit a cymbal, um, the sound that come off the cymbal has a lot to do with the stick in your hand. Wow, wow! I, you know, I was in a I was at Zildjian one day, and Elvin Jones came in. And I mean, he's one of my one of my all time great heroes, you know. So mm-hmm. he came in. I was I was picking out some symbols, and he's testing some symbols and picking out stuff too. So I went into the drummer's lounge at Zildjian, and I'm watching him. And every symbol he played, it sounded like Elvin. And that's like in that B, because they were different symbols, mm. but it sounded like him. You know, the symbol was like a little 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 off but it still sounded had that elvin sound mm, and he's like hey shorty come hey, what's your name that, 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 that. <laughs> play the cymbal and then he wanted to hear what it sounded like across the room so mm. i got behind there and i picked up his stick hit it played it it didn't sound nothing like elvin it didn't sound <laughs> the sound was like not the same wow and i'm like wait a minute so i picked up my stick and hit it played it no it didn't sound like elvin so when I talked to him, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, like how I grip my stick. And he was showing me how where the stick is in his hand. And, you know, when he hit it and the, the hand is like, like really loose, open. And and he's drawing a sound because when you cup the like, if you notice, like when you hit a symbol and put your hand over a cup over, cup your hand over the symbol yes. and go down the symbol, you mm-hmm. get different tones. Yes. The pitches. Mm-hmm. Right. Max. OK, with the stick. The beat, the stick beat has a lot to do with the sound of that symbol. Hmm. Like I use these little air coin tip, I mean, I'm sorry, little tip sticks. Mm-hmm. And and that draws out a certain sound, but with an air coin stick or air coin tip, you get mm-hmm. more sound, more tone out of that symbol. Wow. Right? I learned, so, I'm learning a lot of new stuff today. <laughs> I'm learning a lot of new stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, just try it. I mean, just go take a small, a small bead tip. Take your, uh, what, what kind of tip on your sticks? It's kind of like an acorn. It's kind of like, I don't know if you remember the um, Buddy Rich sticks? Yeah. It's kind of like the Buddy Rich sticks, but it, these are made out of aluminum. So the material was different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but, um, but it's, it's like an acorn, but it's long, like, like, like it's, it reminds you of the Buddy Rich stick almost, but made out of aluminum. So it was a little, it's a different sound. Yeah. It's a different sound. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, if you, if you, if you try, even with, with aluminum, you try different acorn tips, sizes, okay. mm-hmm. you notice the difference in sound. Got facts. Got you facts. Know, you notice the difference in sound, uh, but the mm-hmm. wood tip and the nylon tip, you'd notice de- definitely a difference in sound. Totally, totally, you know? totally. With Dennis, but, I wish, I mean, I don't. I don't want to cut you off. 
you have so much wisdom and I learned so much already. I, I want to go, I may, may want to start back over from the beginning, <laughs> but, um, I just want to, I just want to fast forward because, um, you have so, so much information and, um, just want to talk about like, what gig did you have that you feel like you needed to, to try to apply for an endorsement? Or how was it? Cause I, I felt like you were blessed where you had all these opportunities where, they they were probably beating your beating your door down trying to get you to, to sign with them because I remember the first time that I, I was introduced to you was through the Buddy Rich Memorial series. It was with you, Louis Belson, and um, who was it Greg Greg Bissonette? Greg Bissonette. Yes, and that was my first introduction. And and what I what I admired about you is, and I don't understand why you don't have a a, a chewing gum endorsement by now, but you were. Too- <laughs> <laughs> hey. Dennis had to sing the chewing chewing gum. And kill him. But the brands that you were using and your tuning and the sound, I was like, this cat is on this another level, another level. And that was my introduction. And then the same thing when you said when you when you when you got exposed to um cob him, when you saw him, when you heard the recordings and when you saw him live, you was like, Oh my god, I couldn't believe it's the same dude. That's the same thing when I because you you to me, you're one of the most influ- influential drummers, period. You know, um, Cause you're John Rabendi, but when I saw you make the VHS tapes, the the pocket, what is it? What was your the first tapes that in you the, made? In the pocket. In the pocket. I was like, yo, I saw you doing all that fusion stuff, and but then I didn't even find out about the P the P funk stuff until later on, because I came up Pentecostal, and some of that stuff I couldn't even listen to. But I saw the jazz stuff, and then when I saw that the the the, 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 the pocket. I was like, yo, this cat's pocket is crazy. He's killing. So I was just like, man, when did what part of your career or did you have to pursue endorsements? Or how, how did you how did you get into the, the brands and stuff? Like how did that No, nah, you that, know, it, the, the endorsements came through when I played with Funkadelic, Paul and Funkadelic. Okay. Uh because okay. I, I think they had a uh they had a sonar endorsement. Mm. And when I got the chair, eventually I was the sonar guy. Wow. If I wanted it and I wanted it. So mm. I had a I had a sonar endorsement for a while and then I left that and and uh became independent from, from drum companies. Because I, I never looked for any, any endorsements. Okay. Um, I went to see Chester Thompson, the drummer, Chester, uh, at a clinic because he's a dear friend of mine, mm-hmm. a phenomenal drummer. I went mm-hmm. to see him and um the pro guy, uh uh I was introduced to the pro guy. And Chester was telling him how you know how I played and how he admired me and and uh, he was the one that that uh, got me to contact with with Pearl. Wow, that's been like thirty something years ago. And you know you know what's 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 crazy. Back in the days, every church had a Pearl drum kit. <laughs> I was like, but I remember, <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> Like if you if you went to somebody's church and they didn't have a pearl, you, they got talked about badly, <laughs> badly. Like when I came up in, in in that era where you had to have the top gear and and we we idolized what you guys were using. You was the pearl purse poster child, so we wanted to be everybody wanted to be like Dennis. So we went out and got the free floating. Did pearl make the free floating snare drums? It did, yeah. It did. We, we had you had to have that free floating snare drum, or you were getting laughed at. Get well, you know, so. well, you know, for me, it's like when you, when you, when you get those endorsements. First mm-hmm. of all, you don't have to be true to yourself to figure. I mean, don't don't take the. Yeah, I think you had mentioned it earlier. Mm-hmm. Don't take the instrument because it's free. You have to, you have to like really love the instrument, or yeah, you have to have a serious liking to it. You know, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. nothing worse, and nothing is more of a drag than playing an instrument that you hate the sound, but you got it. I mean, you plan it because you know they're giving it to you free, and then. You know, if you go if you go at it that way, what happens is you're gonna end up like you know getting you know like somebody throws some uh, another brand at you, another company at you, and then you're gonna go for that. Then you turn you you end up with a name or a reputation mm-hmm. as being equipment whore. Facts. Want to do? Because this industry is though it's big, but it's small too, and they all talk. Facts. Got they all big, talk. Big facts. So if you go to the NAMM show, you're going to be a, a, a butthole about, you know, when you're around them. Oh, they're, they're, they're sitting there watching you. 
and they may give you an endorsement, but they they're watching you, watching you make you know see if you're gonna make any kind of weird moves, mm-hmm. and that depends on I mean that would determine whether you get like ads and and all of that. So you know I'm glad you mentioned that earlier because your attitude has a lot to do with endorsements. Yes, and that's that's wisdom. Um, that's wisdom, Dennis, because you're right that like if you're a liability, you know what I'm saying nobody gonna want to rock with you because you you got. <laughs> It's like being in this industry, it's all about the moves you make. And even when you're playing drums, we're thinking all the time because, as you know, there's a million things that we can play, but depending on the setting, it's only a, some, a few that's going to work in our environment that's going to either make people want to stay at the show or it's going to make them want to leave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I know that you have to figure out because you can play rings around, but you don't do that for every gig. No. The, the no, gig tells you what to, what to do. That's what, that's what I'm there for. It's See. always music first. It's mm. not about what I do first. It's music first. Yes. Yes. And that's, so why, I, that's why you get hired. You know, you get hired because, you know, people know that when they hire you, um, they hire you to do what you do, not mm. uh, not to come in. And, uh, uh, my, you know, when I do clinics, I always say to people, when when somebody hire you, um, they hire you to come to, you know, for you to come and like to make this track work. So therefore, mm-hmm. when I walk into a studio or I walk on, walk in on a stage, it's about how do I make this music work? How do I make us sound great? And mm. the key word is us. Yes. Not me. Yes. I'm only as good as what the band allow me to be. You know, wow. and that's why with groups like Schofield and, and P-Funk and all that stuff. I mean, I was with a great band that allowed me to, to, you know, like to speak out more and to express myself. And the other thing is playing in a band that allow you to express yourself instead of like hiring you to, and try to turn you into somebody else. A drummer's Spot drummer. Spot on. A drummer's drummer or a musician musician is a guy who, who has his own sound his own um, uh, creativity or, or, or the way he expresses himself on the, on the gear. Other than that, there's nothing new. Everything, Preach. Every, everything's been played before, before you've done it. The only difference is how you hear it and how you approach it. And, and, and people say, you know, when I say, well, look, you just play what you feel. You know, musically, not, not choply or... You know, I can sit down and, and sometimes I can uh, listen to uh, a drummer of this era play and I can hear exactly what they, they practice on. Because <laughs> they play like, they play like, they play like a, a minute, not even a minute of a groove mm. and then everything else chops after that. And then they get confused because they think that music is like that. Music is not like that. And not unless if you wrote it. But if you if you're trying to work with a, a pop artist or you know or um, or any any artist that's that 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 you know that you gotta spend time and and plan pockets and grooves for, mm. but then you gotta you gotta you gotta know what that mission is and and and, and obey it. Mm. You know um, you gotta go in and and give them what they want, not what you want to play. First is about giving them what they want, and also if you're playing with three or six or with P Funk, it was sixteen of us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to play. To, you have to hear all of that and play with all of that. Mm. Or play with less that, then play with less that. I'm so happy you spoke on this. You preaching, and and I like everything that you said, and I'm glad you said it because in your position, you a great example. You know, what I'm saying of of if we if we follow that, you know what I'm saying, we can we can be successful. But um just the fact that um being authentic, you guys came up in a time where you had to be because you had Vinny, you had to you know, your guys you guys were playing at at top at the highest levels, you know what I'm saying? But there wasn't any YouTube, so whoever was hot at the time, you had to come up, you had to have an identity. You know what I'm saying? Well, because if you but 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 see, but not, not to cut you off, but see what happens mm-hmm. is um when I first in the '60s, mm-hmm. it was blasphemous to sound like somebody else. 
Say it that again. didn't come that didn't <laughs> time until Steve Gadd, and it's not to blame Steve Gadd, but um, when Steve Gadd came on the scene, he was so hot that everybody wanted him. So mm. in order for you to get gigs, you had to play or, or play something like it, that style. <laughs> but that's when copying somebody came accepted. Oh my God. I'm so glad you touched on that. And, but as you can, yeah, I, I, go ahead. You can, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. And, and, and that's why, you know, like if you look at, if you go back and, and do the history on music and you listen to the drunk or, or music from the seventies. Mm -hmm. Now for the younger guy, they look at it and go like, Oh, why would I want to listen to the seventies? That's old school. Mm. But guess what? Everything you're playing is based off of old school. <laughs> you know, when you, when you play rap music, you know, when you like you mentioned Dylan, mm -hmm. now Dylan mm -hmm. was a bad dude, mm. but Dylan mm. learned from from old school. Mm. 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 You know, like you take you know some samples, you know, uh, like uh, like a uh, Sly and the Family Stone, or yes, or yes. or or, or, Funk, or Parliament, or mm -hmm. uh, 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 high old players, JBs at the JBs, uh, the the you know Motown, you know, like some groove from Motown or. Mm -hmm. Some stuff from stacks. That's all old school, and yes, that's you. that's your that's your foundation for the house you're going to build. Wow! In order for you to have your your style, you gotta you gotta have a foundation, and the foundation mm -hmm. for me was like everybody that came before me, which is like you know Clyde Stubblefield, mm -hmm. Ziggy Ziggy Bo, Ziggy Boo Mona Lisa, mm -hmm. um, um, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> David Gabaldi. Bless you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the stacks guys, Al Al Jackson, and, and uh, I mean all those guys, man. And that was mm -hmm. just the groove side, and mm -hmm. then then there was the jazz side, which is you know like Art Blakey, uh, Elvin Jones, Max, Max Roach, man, yeah, Max Ooh. Roach, and um, Papa Joe and Philly Joe, and mm -hmm. I mean Tony Williams was just a that guy was just. He was just on another planet. I mean, mm -hmm. if you sit there and watch him, you know, watch the videos, and I've seen mm -hmm. it live, and I've also played in front of him. Uh, <laughs> him had, to, had to open for him a few nights wow. later. Wow. And, uh, and watching him play, it's like his bass drum and hi hat, they were like two, two different zip codes. <laughs> you know, it was, and then the rod symbol was like, he had a, the, the beat was like, it was just unbelievable. Mm, mm, mm. And then the left hand, how he answered, you know, between the right hand and the left hand was like an answer and call thing that he mm. was doing sometimes. And man, it was just, it was incredible. And then, I mean, that was during the Miles Davis days. Mm. And then when he, when he started uh, launching out doing his own records, it was a wrap. Wow. I mean, this guy, like he just brought drumming so far forward that it was just, it was stupid. And everybody loved him. Like, for instance, like Terry Bazio, mm -hmm. Vinny Caliuta, mm -hmm. yes. uh, Billy Cobham, uh, um, um, Jack D. Jeanette, mm. uh, all, and Art Blick even loved him. All, all the, and myself mm -hmm. uh, and many more guys loved him. But guess what? Mm. We don't play nothing like him. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. There's a difference between being inspired and ripping somebody versus ripping somebody's entire DNA. Yeah. So I, I get I get irritated when I go in sessions, but obviously I'm thankful that I build a reputation for myself. When people hire me, they want me to bring what I, my, my flavor to the table. Yep. So that's that's but everybody don't have that. That's something that you have to build. Yep. And when I was a kid, I did things that kids do. You know, I want to study you, and I've set up my drums like Dennis. But then as I further my career, I wanted I realized that I wanted to have an identity, and I started pursuing that. You know yep. what I'm saying? So. Just, just, just to move it forward, and we got we, we got some questions that that we want to get answered. But I'm looking at to my right of you. There's a bunch of um, snare drums, and I know that you played on a lot of different albums. And I know you have to eventually figure out which what gear and what sound would work for these records. And I know that you came up in a time where you didn't really have to pursue endorsements because they was coming after you because you you built your sound, which is it's amazing when you can do that. That's a blessing, you know what I'm saying, that that you can do that. But um, but that's so cool just for drummers. Just looking at your selection, I can tell you mix it up. And I would say for drummers, even even if you don't know about different companies, when you go to the, to the drum stores like Good Time Center, 
check the different brands out. Yeah. Don't just get a brand because you see a hero using it. Yeah, yeah. Check it out and just yeah. see what kind of sound it is. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, you, you never know. You, you might that might be your vibe. And then when you go to the conventions, if if maybe try the full kit, yeah. then you can start pursuing those companies for endorsements. You know what I'm saying? It's like all the drummers that that Dennis named, they have a brand. They have the, the items that they endorse for their various reasons because of the sound. You know what I'm saying? So. That goal, that everything that Dennis is talking about, it coincides with the topic. You know what I'm saying? And with that said, we got it. We're gonna take a few questions. George, you got any questions? So Dennis, this question is by Yiddy B. It's what does it take as a young drummer to get noticed? Um, first of all, I, I, I you know. I mean, we, it's, it, well, to, to be noticed, first of all, you got to have a, you know, have your own style, uh, and you got you have to be a great player or a good player. But for me, it's like the most important thing is being being true to yourself. You got to be too, true to yourself first, and you know exactly, you know, when you sit and practice. I, you know, like I said, I used to practice all day long if I could. In the summer months, I used to, man, you never, I would, I would <laughs> get up in the morning. And stop practicing at like at, at 11, about 10 30, 11 o'clock. Mm. And I would just go at it all day. I would come up and get, you know, come up and get some some dinner and I'll go back downstairs and I'm practicing again. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. All day. You know, that's how committed I was to it. Um, but also just being true to myself, because I would not sit there and work on things that I already know. I practice and work on things that I didn't know. Mm. You know, so, wow. but again, being young uh, and living in mom's house, I had no, I had, I had no responsibilities. I didn't, I didn't have to worry about bills and and and, uh, and things. So I had a lot of time on my hands. So I would like work on like all these different techniques, like you know, like the sticking techniques and and uh, gripping of the stick techniques and and finger and muscle control techniques and put phone books under my arms and <laughs> taking springs off the pedal because that's what I, you know, I got from buddy rich and, mm. uh, and all these things, you know? Um, but to answer the question is like, you just got to be, first of all, you just have to be true to yourself. So when you sit down and play the drums, if you're true to yourself, it comes through, it comes through in your, in your, in your sound and it comes through in the music and also being yourself. If somebody say, you know, play like a, a Steve Gadd, uh, want you to do a Steve Gadd, like, that's okay. Don't take offense to it. Mm -hmm. Just play the, 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 the sticking of it or whatever, and then try to turn it into the way you would do that. Facts. I played in front of, guys, I played in, I played in front of some guys that, that uh, asked me, like, well, what made you do that? You know, I'm like, well, I, what made me do that? I got it from you. And I'm like, they were, well, what do you mean? And I showed them what they did and I showed them what I did. And they just look at me and laugh because that's how they did it. Wow. I love the answer. And, and what you said is that's that's pretty much my approach as well. Yeah. You know, um, you got to pay tribute, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, it's a difference between taking somebody's DNA of the groove versus getting the sticking, like you said, but making your own version out of it. Spot on. I love the I love the answer. Um, Jules, you got any other questions you want to want to want to put up? So the next question is by um, Edward J. Hernandez. I live on a border town, Texas. Question is: Is it harder to get endorsements coming from um, rural towns? No. In, in smaller no, no. areas. But, but I mean, but you have to you have to venture out and and uh, you know go to try to make it to a NAM show every now and then. And also, you know, and that was another thing about me. It's like, uh, even, you know, like every time I hit the stage, I was being, like I said, being honest as, as possible and giving, a, giving it 110 every time I sit behind that kit. Because when you're playing live in front of an audience, you don't know who that audience, what the makeup of that audience is and who's in that mm -hmm. audience. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of people got discovered because somebody in the audience, uh, an important guy, or 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 important uh, well important musician sit there and heard it and then he's gonna you know if he liked what he heard he's gonna go back and tell you know some other people about it 
and then all of a sudden everybody's going to suss you out. That's one way. The other way is, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, going to a NAMM show every now and then. Mm-hmm. Or go as yeah. much as you can. Now, me, myself, I can't go to a NAMM show. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, something, something with me is, like, I, I think it's it's the, the, the attention. And I don't like attention to myself. Mm. You know, not, not like that, no. Okay. You know, like where uh, they had to hire, the last time I went to a NAMM show, they had to hire a bodyguard. Not because somebody wanted to harm me or anything. It was just to get me from point A to point B. Because the minute you stop and talk to somebody, then all of a sudden you're you're getting, you know, like floored with uh, or bombarded with uh, autographs. Yes. And meanwhile, you're going to an autograph session. You're trying to tell them you're going to go down, and do it. <laughs> but they want it right there. And then if you sign one, you look up, and then there's there's like ten people. You look up again, there's there's twenty five. You look up again, there's 50. And meanwhile, man, you got to be be at this place at a certain time. Yes. But I can't come to the NAMM show. Um, uh, although I would love to go mm-hmm. uh, just to see what's the latest in new gear. And if you go to a NAMM show, uh, if you ever get a chance to go to a NAMM show, because I don't, I don't I don't know if that's going to happen again uh, after this epidemic. Hopefully it will. Yes. But if you do go, try to go down in the basement. That's where you learn where the real stuff is. You just put me on. I I, I never thought about that. I, I, like, I, when I go to NAM, I try to go for the, the full time, and I have to pace myself because NAM is it can be very overwhelming. You can easily get sidetracked. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You go, but I, I say on the last day, I, that's that's my day to really go in areas where I may not have, have, you know, I may not get to, and I go downstairs. And you're right, there, there, there are some gems downstairs but i would say for people that do go to them try to have a strategy you know they, you can get you can download the app then they give you a map of their whole setup yeah and this you can take a section a day because if you don't do that you're going to be overwhelmed because it's just everything at your at your disposal you know so it's overwhelming um i never forget the first time i went down in that basement and it was like a whole, whole other world wow <laughs> stuff i've never seen before mm-mm Wow. Serious stuff like, you know, like really creative uh, technology down there. Mm-mm-mm. Man. Jules, what was the second part of that question? I didn't I didn't I didn't get a chance to see it. The second part of that question from Eric from um Edwin. Or do you want to move on? Let's let's move on to the next two questions. We've got two more questions, Dennis, and then we're gonna let you go. Is, is that okay? Yeah, 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 sure. Cool. Thank you so much. So, Coldplay is a person. Um, I've always been told that I playing the one with deep pockets gets you paid. Can you talk about pocket versus chops? <laughs> well, pockets <laughs> is you know if you listen to, if you listen to James Brown, um, you know like uh, they had this thing called the fat back back then, which sounds like ah, snare drums off. Now, you may not be able to hear the symbols too well because they're not electronic, but. So the height is on one, two, and three, and four, and right? So, but the snare drum, and it all depends on, uh, you know, in the pocket, when you pull the snare drum beat back behind the beat. So it sounds like a flam to the to the uh, to the hi hat or to the right mm. hand, or if like if, if I play, and you know, Daru, you you know more better about that about that stuff, especially coming from <laughs> the background you have, you know, with yes. Dylan. Cause Dylan's yeah, yeah, stuff was Dilla. like a lot of that stuff was like like yeah Jay Dilla stuff. We was way glitchy, way way, <laughs> way. like yeah, so that stuff was like exaggerated by the beat, but it was yeah. good. So like, but but Dennis is talking about it's the glitchy, but it's still a pocket. What I like about Dennis, even when he's playing the grooves, he's playing it strong. Every every note, you know what I'm saying, and and for that music, that's what they want to hear. It's got to be strong. But just to touch on the Jay Dilla stuff. 
So I'm, I'm it's it's still four four, but you, you just just listen. So it's like I'm, I'm going to play the first four bars regular, and then the next four bars I'm going to I'm going to swag it up a little bit. So one, two, three. This is regular, swaggy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that was kind of what you what you did a little bit ago on the rim shot. That little yeah. <laughs> flare. I, type, type I type just type. didn't exaggerate it. That and that's that that <laughs> Dylan thing where he was exaggerating that little stuff and it, and the, the the groove is so elastic when it when it happens when you do that. Mm. The groove becomes like really big. You know, and uh, that's something that I learned. I learned that, you know, like, you know, uh, growing up and cut my teeth on, like, playing James Brown stuff. Mm. James Brown stuff was was pretty much on the beat, but the snare drum was just a little bit behind. But then wow. when I learned how to play a little bit behind the beat, then mm -hmm. I went into, like, trying to figure out how far behind the beat I can play with the left hand. Whoa. And then switching up with the right hand playing, you know, like, having the snare drum on the beat and having the right hand behind the beat. Wow. <sighs> yeah, you mastered the art of groove, though, because even even on a Parliament record, that one, I feel like it, it's behind the beat, so it's like, do, 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 do. you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I, I think I would exaggerate a little bit more, but that's an art form. Like, I don't even, I don't know how, I don't know how well, you yeah. guys did that. But I mean, the, but that was, that was, that, that was putting in, I mean, that's the pocket side of it, you mm. know, like, you know, when George used to say, "I want to, I want to," what do you say? Um, you know, put it in the pocket, or like you know, we're in the studio and he would like yell out "pocket," you know, make sure it's pocket. Mm. And for me, it was like you know what he wanted was just the snare drum behind the beat. Everything else is pretty much on. But then wow. one day I got smart with it. I, I said, "Well, you know, how far behind the beat you want it?" <laughs> and then when he was like, "What do you mean?" and I gave him like all these different examples. His eyes went up like like pinball machine, you know, like it's like <laughs> like it was like his brain went tilt there for a minute because then he heard some stuff, you know, some other things, and like when I did the Atomic Dog record or the song Atomic Dog with the uh, uh, Gary Mudbone Coopney, mm -hmm. who also played drums on it as well, but I played on the the backward side of it, and you know uh, the track the click was pretty much straight. And I just played a little bit behind the beat, and that's what created the vibe. Mm. That's so cool, and, and, and like like what you're saying, when the, the, the Pacific producers like Jay Dilla, Pete Rock, they learn the music they're sampling. They sampling the stuff that y'all played on, so yeah. that makes sense. They wanted to make their drums sound that way, and it became an art form, yeah. which is so cool. Um, wow, that make that makes total sense now. So basically, what my style of what I'm playing, whether I know it or not, it's a part of you know the um, what you guys created. Um, yeah. If that makes any sense, but yeah, that's yeah. major kudos and, and and thank you, you know, for what you've done for for the for the community. And like I said, you're one of the most influ influential drummers. Period. And I'm so grateful for your time, Dennis. Um, this is this is a really cool show. And, and I, although we went a little bit longer today. We got a lot. We were fed well. <laughs> fed well. <laughs> Jules, do we got time for one more question, or should we, should, we, should we close it out? And then you said you had one more question, Jules. This question is from Carlos Felipe. What are your current drum kit setups, and why do you choose those sizes? Ooh, uh, I've always played, well, well, in the beginning, I played the uh, uh, 22 by 14 bass drum. It was all mm. standard then because back then, uh, bass drum sizes didn't come no no longer than a 14. And I've always had standard uh, standard tom toms, which is an 8 by 12, 9 by 13, on the rack tom. Floor toms has always been like either. I mean, in the beginning it was a 16 inch floor, and then the second floor tom was always an 18. But uh, but then you know playing jazz, you got to have a 14 floor time mm. so i brought the 14 in and then kept the 12 13 rack time and just added a 10 you know uh, 8 by 10 uh 8 by 12 9 by 13 um and then i graduate graduate from that to like bigger 
bigger setups. Um, although you never see me play them, but you know, like my favorite setup is a uh, it's two bass drums, four ride toms, uh, three floor toms, a gong bass drum, and a set of octopons on the left hand side. It's like the the old Billy Cobham set setup. Okay, okay, and wow. Playing a kit that big. Man, you know, like, you know, the stretching you have to do. I mean, you have to be in shape to play a kit that big, first of all. And not to have the drums, the tom-toms that, 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 uh, that close together. You know, have a little spread out a little bit. So when you, when you, when you play, you got to reach, you know, your arms got to go out and go around. Even down to the last floor tom. If you got, you know, this is where the position that that gong bass drum is. Mm-hmm. Whether it's far to your, your, your right or bring it up between the uh, the 14 16 or having a, like right over the, the 16 mm. and with the octobonds being over here so you have the your arms are always you know stretching <laughs> you know mm. but then when you start playing and when you get back to a smaller kid piece of cake <laughs> wow wow well piece one of, of the things cake. that one of the things that I always admired about you when I started getting exposed to like the rock and roll guys, they've always had these big set, these big kits. But sometimes you never see them use the stuff. But yeah. it's like Dennis is going to use every piece of that kit. If you got a double double kick up there, he, all of that stuff is getting touched, and that's what I admired about you. And also, what I also liked about you, you had a vocabulary. One of the things that I like your sweep. You had the sweep move that you would do the sweep, and um. You know, you had certain things like the chewing the gum. That was a part of your brand. And I think that's very important as drummers. Not, you know, you don't have to chew gum or do the sweep, but just find some things for your vocabulary. You know what I'm saying? And that that that's gonna help you out. Well see, um, well, see I, I like I said before, I'm a I'm a regurgitation of what came before me. Okay. You know, I, I used to sit there and watch Lady White, and Lenny White used to chew gum all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And, and then I, you know, I'm like, wow, yeah. That looks pretty good. I wonder why he chew gum. And then I didn't learn until later when I met him the reason mm-hmm. why. But mm. uh, but for me, it was like it helped me to relax. Okay. You know, so, um, you know, when you're playing fusion music, sometimes you're, you're playing song or, or jazz. If you're mm. playing a straight ahead song that's at, at warp 12 tempo, you have to be very relaxed. Mm. You know, because the ride symbols, I mean, the, the, the ride pattern is so fast. And and, <laughs> and, and, and if, you, if you play behind, like, like four or five horn players who's playing, who want to take 24 courses, <laughs> you better be in shape, man. Or else, dude, I never forget Sonny Stitt, you know, send mm-hmm. the drummer home. And he stopped the band and told the drummer, I think you need to go home and think about this. <laughs> And that's how those old guys were. They, 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 they were very blunt. And but yet, the thing about them being that way, when you went home, you went home with a vengeance. You know, thinking that you know, saying that the next time I see this guy, I'm going to bury him. Got to come correct. Come correct. Right. And go home. <laughs> you know, so wow. that taught you to be. You know, they were teaching you to be. You know, like really. That, and that's why I got the whole concept of being true to yourself. Mm. You don't don't. Uh, don't walk on the bandstand. You're thinking that you all it is, and 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 not really listen to yourself when you play, or mm. tape yourself when you play, so you can hear back who you really are when you're playing. Because sometimes yes. you're so involved in what you're doing, and if you don't have a tape machine, you know, or some kind of uh, a device where you can listen back, mm. sometimes you you what you think and what you hear is two different things. Where I I remember in the beginning, I, I used to play things and I'm like man I killed it and I listened back and was like man I sound like a bowl of hot mess <laughs> yes <laughs> wow so that taught me to how to listen to myself when I play mm. you know wow. when I'm practicing that is you know yes yes but then it's also taught me you know like what I what, when I play with a band how I listen to that band how I listen to me in it Mm-mm-mm. wow Dennis we're so thankful I'm so glad that that God, you know, bless you to come on this universe and for, for what you contributed to the to this music game. You know, what I'm saying and to the world. I'm so thankful for you taking our time and speaking with us today. And 
I'm wishing you the best in 2021. And I wanted to, did you want to give anybody any advice regarding the topic before, before we let you go as far as how do I apply for an endorsement? Any advice? No, I think, I think you said it the best, man. I mm. really do. I appreciate it. My, my whole vibe is every time I go there, that's, that's, I mean, I'm always thinking about how, how I present myself, you know, mm. how I look to those companies, you know, and I'm pretty much a nice guy anyway. So, you know, I don't go in there, you know, you know, thinking that I'm all of this and all of that. Mm. In fact, I never thought of myself that way. It just happens that people saw me and they like what I do. And, and then out come Dennis Chambers. Well, just to add, just just to add to what you're saying, the drummer we endorse is the company, not the other way around. Yeah, the company right, doesn't right, endorse right. us; we endorse the company. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right, right. So just don't get, you know, have keep that in mind, but don't get it twisted. Don't get the big head. Don't get beside yourself, but still know your worth. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, after paying dues, you learn your worth. So now you look okay. It's a give and take. Yeah, it's a give and take. So, did you have anything to add to that, Dennis? Yeah, the only thing I have to add to that is, you know, of course, people are people, and in some companies, you do have some people, you know, they they envious or or, or they something about them, or something about you they don't like, you know, and mm. you could be the, the nice, sweetest guy in the world, but, mm. you know, but you know, you know, try to look past all of that, you know, and just, you know, your goal is this, just to, you know, try to get an endorsement and, and, uh, you know, be as polite as possible and, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, just try to, you know, go at that angle. And, um, you know, you'll find yourself, you know, like uh, better in the long run mm -hmm. um, of endorsements. You're getting endorsements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you find like you, you, you run across somebody like Jonathan Moffat, you know, as a sweetheart, you know, um, uh, nice. or, or uh, John Blackwell when he was on earth. He was a, the guy was a sweetheart, mm. you know, and, and companies would do anything for, for people like that. Mm -hmm. They know they're so not right. buttholes, but however, there are some guys or some companies and uh, some guys in companies, they make you feel like there's a racist thing going on here. And um, but you have to you have to know when that is when it happens. Mm. But just don't assume because if a company says no, well then they're being racist. No. It's not the it's not the case, you know. Some somebody a company like Pearl, for instance, Pearl is is uh, first of all it's a Japanese owned company, hmm. and some things they you know like Pearl US can't um, say yes to until they get the okay from the the Japanese, hmm. and some things they can't answer for. But but for me it's like if somebody tells me no, if I want something they tell me no, then I ask why. And if, they give me, <laughs> and if they give me a legit reason, then I'll go with it. You give me a bull crap reason, then I'm going to respond. And I they like that. I like the respond that I'm going to give. <laughs> but at least I sussed it out. I thought about it. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's all about asking questions, and but how it's it's how you answer it. To, it's how you ask as well. Yep. You don't have to go in vigilant. You can just be, you know, say get your point across without being. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's an energy transfer. If you transfer that energy, that's what you're going to get back. Yeah. But if, if you like what Dennis was saying, if you be polite about it and ask, you know, well, why not? And just, you know, accept it. But, you know, just be like, okay, well, thanks for the opportunity. And I'll try, I'll try next year. Or just I'll, I'll keep in touch. And who knows? Next year they might be looking for a drummer like you. And you may be in that position to get, with the, you know, get some products. Yeah. So. So yeah, Dennis, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for your time. I wish you a beautiful rest of your day and weekend. And all the love, Dennis, all the love. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. And uh, it's been a blessing. And I just want to say to everybody, happy holidays. Happy and safe holidays. If you want to find Dennis, Jules, she just put up his information, his website, and his um, Instagram, Facebook. I don't know how much Dennis is on them, but... He would answer it. He would get back to you when he can yeah. <laughs> on the social medias. But yeah, we just, we just, we just so grateful to, you know, to get this knowledge that we learned from you and um, much love, much kudos. And I never forget when I met, when I had the opportunity to meet you in person at the gear festival, it was me, you and Keith Carlock. We were in the same room. Oh, we were yeah. cleaners at each other. And um, 
And Dennis got on my drum kit and tried it out, and he made it sound funky. <laughs> I thought he was a little puzzled by the, the angles, but he still made it funky. <laughs> and the angles were, 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 were unbelievable, man. <laughs> I thought Keith Carlock had some issues. Jesus. <laughs> Man. But you know what? My setup is definitely a tribute to Gene Krupa and all the guys that would do the marching. Yeah. But I was woke up one day. I was like, well, what can I, how could I take what they did and take it further? So that was my reinition of, of, of doing that and taking it further. And this is what we have today. So I'm thankful that I learned from the best by watching. Well, it works. Work. It worked for you. <laughs> it, it definitely works. <laughs> Thank you. That's for sure. Thanks, Dennis. Well, I'm wishing you a great evening, and hopefully I see you in 2021. Hopefully you yeah. And I want to come to that museum of yours with all of the bits, and I, I'm going I'm to I'm make sure my money is right so I can, I can walk out with something. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Hopefully I won't get in trouble with DW in case it's not that brand, but, you know. Hey, they can take a joke. <laughs> they can take a joke. <laughs> I meant to put some tape over the badge, but um, but yeah, Dennis, have a good day. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you back. Thank you. Yo. Wow, I'm so full. I feel like I need to start playing drums over, like start from the beginning. <laughs> but yo, this was a this was a long show, but I'm hoping I really enjoyed myself. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, we know 2020 has been a year for all of us, but hopefully that we will be able to give you guys some positive vibes. You know, through the show, um, I want to give a big thanks, you know, to um, Abby Lewis for accommodating me in this beautiful room at Electric Garden Studios in Brooklyn, New York. They got an ill B room upstairs. I mean, the regular room is so dope. You know, people like D'Angelo and Anderson Pac. You know, actually, actually, um, I got a record that I recorded out of here, which is out now. The Pete Rock and the Soul Brothers, Peace to Mentos Volume Three, was recorded in this room next door, and um, the engineer Jackie. This is the room that she was in. So this room got a lot of history. So shout out to Ben Kane and thank, thanks for letting me use the facilities. Thank you guys for tuning in for all of the, all the episodes. They're all on YouTube from volume one to four and wishing you guys a beautiful Christmas for those that celebrate that and a, and, 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 and a blessed 2021. Let's, let's try to come in. Oh, we got the next show coming. So the next, the next episode is gonna be January 11th, Pacific, 12 p.m. How do I prepare for auditions? That's going to be a good topic. So get your questions ready. And hopefully we I got to see what I'm going to bring on that show. Maybe um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a post. Maybe you guys can give me some recommendations on who y'all think I should feature on the next show. Cool? Cool. Um, I'm going to close out. Man. I want to close out with like another Parliament style groove. It may not be one of the grooves that Dennis Chambers play, but Definitely want to just pay tribute to that, to that vibe. Big shout out to Spanky, earlier guest, George Spanky McCurdy, for coming on the show, Philly's Finest. He's, he's, a, he's a legend as well, and he's done a lot. Versatile, you know, versatile drummer from play with Lauryn Hill, um, Lady Gaga, and the list goes on. So I want to thank both of my guests for coming on, Dennis Chambers for all, all, all that he spoke on, and um, shout out to my co-host, Jules Hollins. Jules Hollins. <laughs> Jules Hollins. It's a TV show. Jules Thomas. And um, shout out to Brands, DW, PDP, the head drumsticks, Pisces symbols. And for this last groove, I'm gonna I'm gonna use some new bits that I have coming soon. These right here, they made by this company called Big Fashion Air Drum. And they pretty much like muffles. They to muffle your sound down. And this is the Rusic Records with yours truly face. Um so I'm going to give you all a little bit of example of what it sounds like with and without it. So right now my snare is like this. Just a little more hollow, hollow sound. But check this out. So you can play a rock gig and play some fusion or some soulful like JB type of vibe and not have to change the drum head. These are very cool, and um, if you're interested, just s send me a DM. I'll get you hooked up with, with Big Fast Snare Drum, and we'll get you some. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna play this last little groove. If you wanna find me, those are my hash, are my um, ats, at Dobber Jones, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and my website is Rusic Records. Um, I need to update my website, but it's coming soon. I just haven't had time. It's been a busy year. <laughs> Although we're in the pandemic. 
Be safe with your mask. I have one. It's not on right now. Let's let's continue to get positive vibes and hopefully 2021 we can come in better. You know what I'm saying? And, and my condolences to every to anybody that lost people this year through the you know through the crisis that we having. And all we can do is stay pray, prayed up and be there for each other. And let's just try to treat everybody like how you want to be treated. And um, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna play this one last groove and then I'm gonna be out. All right.